Okay, in accord, this bit. Welcome. When I look at you, Ben Garwood, I always think there's something missing, and it's a Viking hat. <laughs> like he's coming without his Viking, you know, the, with the with the horns off the side. Thank Just you. like some flipping Lord of the Rings character yeah. rocked up. Ben Garwood, <laughs> Amanda Verrells. Vernals. God's sake. <laughs> Vernals. Vernals. Ver- flipping idiot. Sorry, I'm an idiot. <laughs> Sorry. Amanda Vernals, Ben Garwood. Welcome to Thank HR you. Studio. Absolute pleasure to have you back, Ben, <laughs> and you in for the first Thank time. You. Thank very, you, mate. Very good. Right. Do me a favour, please, yep. and um, introduce yourselves. Okay. For Go people on, who don't know you. Go on, Amanda. Me? Okay. Amanda Vernals. Uh, veteran spouse, mum, uh, small business owner, friend of... Over to you. Uh, you were also a bit part on the Ali G film. <laughs> Check it out. You know, that, yep. So she's a dancer with um, uh, Naomi Campbell in the background, all dressed, all golded up. Gold bikini. Gold bikini. Yeah. So there you in go. The Ali G film. <laughs> yeah, she was an Ali G Brilliant. film. Not used to, that used to be a, um, a club promoter, didn't you? Yeah, nightclub promoter. Um, <coughs> many years. Absolutely loved it. Uh, worked in the TV industry, music industry. Keep it really vague, but uh, had the bestest time ever. And uh, and then decided that I needed to calm it all down, and uh, I actually actually became a teacher, art teacher. Oh, that, well, that's a bit different. It is a bit different, but I genuinely I knew it had shelf life, and I had the like I said, I had the best time ever. I met Rich, my husband, when I was what twenty two. He asked me to marry him. This first night I met him, I said yes. Well, uh, yeah, I said yes. Guys, got to do what a guy's got to <laughs> do. <laughs> And then, uh, fair play, Rich. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we've had a mad, crazy, crazy life, and I wouldn't change any of it, even the, even the really scary bits. And there's been many as a veteran spouse, to say the least. It doesn't get any easier with a 16-year-old and a 12-year-old daughter and a husband that's still away. But we're doing it, and proud to be. Proud to be Mrs. V. <laughs> <laughs> you did, were you a teacher at your daughter's school? No. Imagine Co- that. College, no. <laughs> oh, right, okay. Colleges, yeah. So, um, so yeah, it's interesting now just um, looking back on, on time as, like I said, as a mum now and kids are growing up. So yeah. do as I say, not as I did. <laughs> so are you able to draw with the production now that you do, you guys are doing. Are you so are you drawing on the your skills experience when you were working in the sort of dodgy industry? Yeah, we got a dance in a cage <laughs> just outside, and handing out flyers. <laughs> no, it's very much so. Just in the people skills, really, and the just it's the people that we're meeting. I mean, are fantastic, and but your approach to it doesn't doesn't change. You know, you still. You still, I don't know. You still I think also you 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 bring your creative side and also the side that you were involved in media before, uh, so you have a passion in in what we're trying to create here. Very much so. Yeah. I've got my degree in media and visual culture, and I guess it's funny because, like like I said, I I, I very much stepped out of things to teach and put my serious head on in order to have a family. And Rich was away so much, and one of us needed to not be flitting around all over the place in order to put down roots. And I'm, and it was a decision I, I really was proud to make and studied hard for. Um, but um, it's, it's only more recently that I've kind of delved back into what originally was me, is me, is still me. And, um, and I guess that's why I'm stumbling a little bit, still talking about it, because it's, it's still pretty fresh. Well, it has. It's been pretty quick. We've only been really playing with this for... Last couple of we months have. or so, last three months. But, uh, but yeah, it's been cool so far. Yeah. Good. Glad to hear it. Can we, I mean, <coughs> can, can be difficult to find something you, you, you enjoy doing, isn't it? I yeah. think yeah. it's like, pe- oh, whoever, pe- it's, it's really rare to find something you, you enjoy doing that you even get the opportunity to do. Oh, very much like, so. Let alone twice, you know. Um, when I was in the when I was in the nightclub industry, um, you know, like I said, the people we meet on a daily basis, and it was it was the norm. But it was extraordinary people. But you know, in like I said, just in the environment that was normal to me. Um, but as a result of being in that environment, I got picked up for a, a couple of modelling agencies and got TV stuff and 
music videos and things and it was it was just really cool and I genuinely feel so lucky to have experienced that but also I feel even luckier to have recognized when to step out of my own accord and um, and in order to have a family and 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 pursue my art which is what my my who I am really um, my art was always the thing that got me out of stuff you know it got me out of school into art college got, got my degree but you know, um, and still now, you know, my art has has paved the way for everything. And I think, you know, when you're only when you're good at art, it's it's one of those things that it's like, how do I make a career out of that? And really, it's kind of found me, you know, even hooking back up with with Ben, you know, my husband and I, Rich, we used to kick about at the gym, you know, playing pool, drinking coffee, we'll do workout and everything. So we've always kind of been in and around. And of course, the banter that comes with just being over at HR4K, like I said, veteran spouse. It's just easy. It's our second home. It still is. Um, and then when I started focusing in on um, doing my own stuff, as far as artwork's concerned and things, you know, the piano bar's up at yours. It looks pretty cool. And um, um, so equestrian-themed art and design is kind of what I, I, I focus in on my small business. And... Uh, Kind of more recently, during you know April when we were coming out of lockdown, um, my lockdown project was to take a classic Mini Cooper Mini Mini and turn it into a mini bar. And Ben kindly said, "Come on, Anne, let's do a photo shoot over at HR4K." Ran a little video and had a bit of fun doing so. It's, it debuted there, and uh, it's up for up for auction. You know, up for sale um, with with proceeds towards Mission Motorsports and the Horse Trust. The bar is up for sale. It is, oh, yeah. Cool. But like I said, yeah, that you're was... Also building, aren't you building one out of a, an aircraft as well? We are, you? yeah. We've got um, a Lynx, but Rich, Rich used to fly the Lynx uh, army and um, managed to get hold of uh, a nose cone of a Lynx heli, which as soon as the bar has, has found its new home, then we're going to work on that and, uh, and then get that, get that as the next piece. But uh, yeah, there's lots. Their of kitchen's awesome. It's all like, I mean, like the work <laughs> surface is, is a wing of a helo. Yeah. Oh, you know, really? And then yeah. obviously with the glass top suspended and, you know, there's, so there's a lot of stuff what Amanda does it, and there's what we do in HR4K. There's a really close similarity. Mm. Um, you know, I studied, I actually did art before I joined the Paras. Um, I have a very artistic side to my personality and a lot of that's come out as how we've created hr4k that is essentially was my medium if you like to create within that space and obviously what amanda's been doing in 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 her side for her business as she came over this obviously a very similarity so how how she found a connection there to hr4k no it's always like i said cool. it's it's been cool hr4k has kind of been our, our second home and uh, ideas have just kind of come as a result of us being you know, been together, really. Yeah, it's an amazing place. I mean, you know, because you, you come there and you work from there now and again. But, I mean, we've had people go there and give each other jobs. We've had people there, um, you know, who are inspired to... Where are you going with that? I was going to crack a gag and I thought... You were. Uh, <laughs> I thought we were going to talk about that job you gave someone in the toilets. Um, yeah, so it's just one of these places that I think is a creative space, you yeah, know, whether definitely. it's, you know, whether you can go, it's almost uh, a muse, I don't know if you like for some, you know, you can go think, there and just be yeah, inspired. Yeah, I think I'd certainly find it a safe place in order to just be, because it's just, I don't need to watch what I'm saying, I don't need to how watch how I be, I, I just feel like I can relax and just chill, and like I said, you haven't got rid of us since. No. <laughs> um yeah, uh, obviously, me and you have known each other a long time. A long time. <laughs> uh, thanks again for bringing me on for the third time. I'm the, I'm the most popular guest, aren't I? Because I've been on three times? Or, <laughs> why, or, 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 is, or is it more of a case that... Work, I, you've been nagging or is the it, most, <laughs> Or is it more of a case that I'm the guy that you call when you've got no one else? That's <laughs> yeah, what it is, yeah, isn't it? Bit, bit about, bit thanks, about. mate. Uh, yeah, so obviously you and I have known each other a long time. I, um, I joined... The Paris back in 97, I did about three years. I transferred from there to the Remi, transferred, did about two years in the Remi, transferred back again to the Paris. Same platoon, same section, um, got called uh, a crap out by more of my Paris mates, got called a failed crap out by my Remi mates. Um, 
did another four or five years with two para before going pathfinders and then pathfinders at the age of 32 i then joined the regiment and then i did about 11 12 years within the regiment uh leaving as staff sergeant um but i set it up hr4k three and a half years before i got out i'd already designed a few bits and pieces a bit of a kit pest um i designed some belt kit that the training squadron bought and had and ran with for a while uh, i think seesaw were also we're going to take it on um that was that's how I kind of i got into business and then on the side i was doing a bit of procurement for anti-poaching teams and some um um sort of uh other government part ogd types and um and then i thought Do you know what i'm i really like the idea of starting a business so i then created hr4k with my business partner david who's a chartered accountant um we started off in my garage selling t-shirts and hats and all these other bits and pieces flipping those and then uh I really struggle to compete in that market because as it was an online market, anyone can be whoever they want to be. Uh, so what we did is we looked to go towards bricks and mortar by creating something physical that people can visit and come to uh, and experience then obviously gave us uh, an advantage within the market and actually gave us a chance to prove who we were without actually saying who we were. Um, obviously, I was still serving in the SAS at the time, so I couldn't come out as a, a, an SAS brand, but I could build a brand that looked and felt felt like it. Um, and then it got to a stage where I um, just wasn't, I wasn't getting the fulfillment I needed out of being in the army anymore. I craved responsibility. I craved the need to have a seat at the table and a voice. Uh, and really that goes back to the sort of the artistic side where I wanted a chance to create by creating. I mean, uh, being involved in an operation, having some form of input into that and using your brain and uh, et cetera. Uh, and then I just got to a stage where I wasn't doing that because the army posts and promotes you all the time you don't necessarily get promoted or posted into the best job you get posted and promoted into a job that's available um and unfortunately all the work that i had done with my previous uh team uh i was then moved on because that's how the army works and i was i wanted to leave before i got disgruntled um and uh so i thought sod it you know i pull the pin thought about it on a friday uh, monday i did the old seven clicks i got an early release um which was good and as I said, I'd already set the business. And now we now run HR4K full time and also run a chartered accountancy on the side with my business partner, uh, David, who runs the chartered accountancy. Um, we run a number of, um, I wouldn't say charities, but they're kind of um, good projects that where we support getting veterans into local gyms around their own areas, as well as we still do a bit of procurement. We help the anti-poaching teams and we run a gym and we've got a number of shops that are open up around the country. So it's going really well. Um, it's hard. It's really hard. Um, things are incredibly tight at times. Um, but obviously, as long as the staff and the bills are paid, then, then I'm kind of happy. Uh, but again, it gives me a chance to create. It gives me a chance to do things. It gives me a chance to be involved in something. Um, and I think um, as, as a man, I feel I want to create. I feel I want to build and, and do stuff. Uh, so really HR4K is my medium, is my platform, is to, to do that. Um, and about four years ago, uh, I came up with an idea. It was actually before that, uh, really. It, uh, I was listening to Chris Evans's show. And he was talking about, uh, it was just as I came back from Afghanistan after we lost Lloydie. Um, and a few things sort of came in. Um, came into perspective really is about age and, and uh, responsibility and a few other bits and pieces and also that came with my own age you know I was now in my mid 30s and I was thinking about my own uh, sort of um, my own life and 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 my kids and everything else was quite important I was listening to Chris Evans's show and he was sort of talking about how he was getting into yoga and getting into fitness and, and doing a few changes in his life uh, to obviously stay healthier and happier for his own kids and that kind of sat in the back of my mind for a while and then uh obviously years later um four years from now uh four years back now i when i created hr4k i thought this is a good chance to do what i wanted to do which is essentially create a, a show a series that kind of looks positively at mental and physical well-being 
and certainly for me uh, as a bloke now in his 40s where I am seeing a lot of changes in myself uh, both physically and mentally I'm also seeing um, a lot of changes in those people around me and there's more responsibility that I need to to care about uh, now with the kids and wife etc I sort of look at the world slightly different so now I wanted to use this platform to research into you know how we can be healthier how we can be happier but I didn't want to go down this whole oh morbid way I'm so sad this is a sad story this I, I wanted to look at the positive side so I wanted to get really good people really positive and influential people not celebrities I wanted real people uh, and I want to hear on their experiences. So I tried looking at the show a few years ago with a friend of mine. It didn't work out. Um, I think it felt like he was going a little bit wokey, which isn't me. Uh, so we kind of, I, I, I kind of shelved it for a few years. And then this year when I really got to know Amanda and Rich, they were like, you've got to do this. This show's brilliant. It's a really good idea. You've got to do it. So we thought, sod it. The only way you're going to do it is if you... You do it yourselves. Okay. So uh, uh, Amanda, with the help of Rich and a lad called Mike, um, uh, who does all the filming, the editing, we thought, sod it, let's just create a TV show. And then it kind of went from there. All right, take a breath a minute. Jesus. What is the uh, what is the the structure of it? Because when he's explained it to me, mm -hmm. oh, I've seen it on... It, it looks like nothing I've seen before. It's, oh, not, really? like a, it's not like a normal composition. Yeah. of a, you Pull that mic in for me, please. Sure. Um, it's probably nothing that you've seen before because it's from Bane's head. <laughs> 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 All original <laughs> ideas. <laughs> no, it's, um, like I said, um, well, Ben put it to me as far as, and Rich, you know, we were at boot camp, weren't we? And we were just literally boot camp and beers. So we'd done the boot camp, we were at the beer stage. And um, like I said, you went through the original idea and we were like not being funny but you don't need any of that don't need it it'll just complicate things confuse things and strip you of you what, um, what was it can i can i ask what what like an outline of what was the original it was a bit wokey yeah it was a bit wokey. It was a bit, it was a bit celebrity um it was conforming too much well, to that wasn't our idea that no. was that was the that was the pitch that was written yeah so. That was the, so when we when I created the idea, I wanted a more of a TFI Friday slash um, Wayne's World Soccer AM kind of feel. I wanted something really raw, really edgy. But the way it was being taken mm -hmm. by some of these producer types that um, helped me drive the early days when I first came up with the option, I first um, um, sort of pitched the idea to other people to help me create this. Uh, they wanted a more uh, commercial aspect to the show um, so I thought that's what people need mm. I didn't want that that's never the plan and then obviously just with speaking to Amanda and Rich it was just, just more like stuff them stuff them you've got to stay true to you because you yourself are unique with the people that you know your your own story HR4K is doing its own thing and actually do you know what if you're not on board then actually do you know what? It, it doesn't matter but at the same time, I think there's something for everyone, I genuinely say. Um, we've got inspirational stories. We've got health. We've got fitness. We've got mental well-being. We've got we're just having fun. But what is incredible is the people that we've met so far is, I don't know, I genuinely feel like we're building a family in order to come back round, you know, at a later date to be able to hook back up and, and go, hey, you know, what are you up to now? And, you know, we've just... Oh, I don't know if I can say. Yeah, but. we're we're picking <laughs> stories that we we're picking stories that um that we want. You know, yeah. we're picking stuff. We're not picking. We haven't got an agenda. Mm. That's not really what we're doing. But instead of the the sort of classic narcissistic, hey everyone, I've got this story. I've got PTSD. Hey I've, everyone, I've got this bad story. I want the world to know because that's my unique selling point. <clears throat> we're not going to them. What yeah. we're doing is we're going to real people. Mm. And um, and most of these people were meeting by chance. So mm -hmm. um, on the first episode, we went up Penny Fan. We didn't arrange to meet anyone there. We just went. Oh, excuse me, can I have a quick word? Oh, Tell did us. you? I thought those. So there was a random, yeah, random genuinely people. Ran on on the day. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I did not realize. So that random okay. people, and then we just met. There was two girls. They were just before we were about to go back down the hill. 
uh, we said, um, come over quick chat. Uh, can you just tell us why you've come up Penny Fan? And they went straight into it. They were like, well, my friend, you know, she's trying to stay sober for the last six months. And we're like, mate, this is, this is exactly what we're talking about. This other lad, we stopped him and he, he obviously noticed that we we're with uh, Chris Ryan. So he, uh, this guy got quite excited and wanted to have a chalk, uh, talk to Chris because he reads his books. And um, we took the opportunity and said, look, you know, why are you here? And he said, well, actually, I'm training for, to go up Kilimanjaro. Mm -hmm. I've suffered quite recently with uh, mental health. I've been to a men's mental health charity in uh, Cornwall. Um, and also I'm supporting my dog, my, you know, dog charities mm -hmm. and spending a bit of time with my dog. My dog's helping me through my shit times at the moment. Amazing. But I just couldn't believe how honest <clears throat> people were. And you know, with sharing, mm. I think that's what we, that's what we've done here. I like those other guys as well. That there was a group of four blokes, yes. uh, a couple of them playing a band together. They're just mates from somewhere near Birmingham Way, uh, Dudley, Wolverhampton, that sort of thing. And um, they decided to go up Penny Fan, we'll meet up because haven't seen each other because of lockdown, and have a drink at the top of Penny Fan. Well, isn't that what the show's about? Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's. Uh, yeah, when you say you're surprised that people are talking about it, I. I started this thing a couple of years back when I first started working for in Mass that I work mm -hmm. for now, and it was doing meditation once a week. And it, it wasn't that oh yeah, me saying everyone should meditate. It was just anyone wants to come down and do it or try it, and there's the opportunity because mm -hmm. I was doing it at the time. And what I was finding, I, I <coughs> I'd make a point of, of when when the meditation session would finish, I'd always make a point of saying that I really. I needed that. I'm a, I've had a crap day. I'm like, I'm really stressed at the moment. I, and it may or may not have been true, sure. but I would just say it, it's like open the floor. Yeah. And so back to your point there about talking to these people and they're willing to talk about it. It's because they've been asked. Yeah. When you when you table the subject, they don't mind talking about it, but it's still it's still a subject that people wouldn't willingly bring up themselves mm -hmm. at the moment. Well, Most it's, people. It's like when you to say say to someone, "Oh, hi, how are you?" But you know, when you stop and you actually listen to the answer. Actually, people really are happy to share, and they really, really need to share. And I think that's what we've we've kind of done here. Yeah, I think the pair of us we're pretty easy going. It's easy to talk to us, you know. We're uh, we're not judgy. We don't. No. As I said we, you know, we just want to hear people's stories, and we want to hear why they do what they do. Um, I like the idea of supporting and doing good stuff i'm just not very good at being at the front end of it so I l i'd rather set the parameters for it if you like and that's why i think with this we don't want to go too deep into into the crooks of mental health into um weight into fitness into nutrition etc we don't want to go into the too deep because actually you know there are so many people who can find those avenues and find these support groups. All we want to do is signpost mm -hmm. or give give the, the 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 ideas. So, in the series Own It, uh, which you can find on uh, HR Four K TV at the moment, and um, is that on YouTube, on YouTube, yeah. yeah, and it's also on our Instagram, my HR Four K underscore on the Instagram page as well, Facebook HR Four K as well. Um, we we not only have, um, we, we, the, the way it works is we go to the first segment generally go, it means that we go to something that's open to anyone, whether it's going up the fan, anywhere in the national parks, Spartan races, something that anyone can go and do that's either free or not overly cost effective, uh, over costly. And the idea is just to show that these things are out there, that people can just go and do stuff. And mostly those things bring other elements to it. So fresh air from being out the Brecon Beacons, uh, socializing, interacting with other people, health benefits, etc. Then we get someone who's an inspirational character. So the first episode we saw Justin, um, Oliver Davis, who's a lad who's lost his legs, but he's now climbed Kilimanjaro, uh, Mont Blanc, and he's looking to climb Everest. I mean, this guy is a normal run-of-the-mill Joe, you know, Joe Civi, uh, Joe average Joe type who lost his legs through a shitty situation and thought, you know what? I'm not going to let it get to me. You know, I'm not going to be defined by my circumstances. That is the term we use in the show. <laughs> and, um, and we just want to show, look, this guy can do it. If this guy can do it, there's no reason why other people can't, can't do these things. It's so obviously just hearing his story about how or why, or, you know, and, and how he's able to, uh, to do these things and get his mind in the right place. 
And then we um, bring on a subject matter expert. So each episode is a different subject matter expert, whether it's nutritionist, a physiotherapist or a psychologist. And what we ask of them is just an insight into something or a topic that they want to talk about. And then we want a top tip. So each episode, we get a top tip from the subject matter experts for the viewers to then take away and try for that month or so between segments, between uh, episodes. And then the idea is we get lots of good feedback. So, yeah, I did try that. I did try that one finger lift. I did try um, not eating all my scarf in a one and actually, you know, sitting down and having dinner with my family. I did try and do this, you know. So actually, these aren't preachy top tips. These aren't, we're not trying to preach and tell people what they should and shouldn't be doing. We're just giving people ideas, just you know. And, you know yeah. And then uh, we bring on a musician. So each episode we introduce new music. Music is um, uh, evokes emotion, evokes memory, uh, inspires, it motivates. If you think about every breakup you've ever had, there's probably a soundtrack. Every new relationship, there's a soundtrack. Every tour you've been on, there's a soundtrack. Um, we don't take music, we don't give music enough credit for how it makes and sets the scene. If everyone, if you think all of us, we've got a score, you know, everyone has got our own soundtrack score. Uh, to what we've done through our lives. And what we want to do is we want to bring music back to the forefront of well-being by sort of saying, you know, this is new music. Why don't you try listen to this in the gym? Why don't you try and listen to this next time you're out cycling, next time you're in the car and you, you're just having a shit day? Just listen to some cool music. Um, and so we get the artists to play two tracks. One is a live track in, in our studio, which is HR4K, and the other one is towards the end of the show, which I'll explain now. And then after music... Uh, we then get a what we call them a, a community trailblazer, and that's someone who's doing something amazing, or someone or some or some people that are doing amazing things for their community. Uh, so the first guy we've got Wes Gold uh, from uh, CrossFit Faru, and obviously the Grometti Fund. This is a lad who's gone out there and completely revolutionized anti-poaching by looking at it a completely different way, getting the local community involved. He uses CrossFit to keep his um, his rangers fitter and healthier and, and increase their longevity in the field. Amazing bloke. Done amazing things. Saved countless numbers of, of animals and, and, and humans, human lives as well. If you think of the amount of murders that are going on by the, you know, the rangers, how many of them are being murdered each year, it's, it's uh, unbelievable. So he's a, he's a community trailblazer. And then finally, we then get... Um, just like Soccer AM used to do, we then get some of the guys and girls in the studio audience to participate in our three-minute challenge at the end. And this is a different group each time. So whether it's, um, I don't know, uh, uh, Leamington Spa Rugby Club, whether it's Lucktonians, whether it's Batsy Dogs Home, or whether it's a CrossFit gym, we do two boys, two girls, and they do a three-minute AMRAP. And then the idea is to highlight the charities and the good work they do for their own community, as well as pitching them up against lots of other people. So that's kind of it in a really big walnut shell. <laughs> um, but yeah. Physical competition. Yeah. Uh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a three-minute challenge. It's, um, it's an AMRAP, so as many rounds as possible in three minutes. It's uh, 10 press-ups, 10 chin-ups, 10 uh, sit-ups, 10 burpees. Uh, not necessarily in the order and um, they have to do it as a team so that they go at the slowest man's pace as many reps as possible and as many reps as possible in that three minutes um, it's a burner it is a burner <laughs> I think it's worked out that the first two teams that have done it have both done like say 86 yeah, reps or something um, but the idea is just to have something that people could try at home or could try at their local gym or try at their club something that how they could pitch themselves against the guys and girls that are on the show. So yeah, it's great. How many episodes in it? Uh, so we just finished in filming episode two now, um, but we've got the content and we already started work on episode, episode three. three. How long has each episode taken you to do? Um, well, I mean, off and on, probably uh, maybe, I think if you condense it, probably about a week's worth of filming. Mm -hmm. Um, and then obviously with the editing, it's probably another week or so on the editing. So a couple of weeks. So how are you splitting down the work then between you? Who's doing what? We pull it out of our ass as we go along <laughs> to be fair. Garwood, Garwood situation, no change. 
Um, uh, well, we don't. We kind of go, right, this is a good idea. Um, do you want to... So we had Matt Pritchard on the other day. Mm -hmm. We're hoping to get um, uh, Vic Vickery on soon, which is really cool. We've got Billy Billingham coming on. Um, so, but all of these people, though they're relatively famous or well-known, they've all done stuff. You know, what I don't want is some actor that's only ever been someone else never actually done anything themselves i'm not about celebrity worshiping or anything else so majority of the time if it's a one-on-one -on -one interview then amanda kind of runs with that um and then when it comes to kind of doing something an event wise muggins here does it <laughs> uh like we did the dawn stalkers which i can't was swim swimming swimming in panar i genuinely can't swim so yeah. i came with my armbands but made coffee instead you straight up can't swim no Flipping out. I know, it's bad, isn't it? My girls can. So I was, no, pushing them forward, definitely. But uh, I can't swim. She was like, oh, I can't swim. I was like, so <laughs> I'll do it then, yeah? Nice one. What ripped. was that then? What was it? Uh, oh, so we went, oh, yeah. Saw that yeah, yeah, we went to Dawn Stalkers in Pinard. So uh, that's a great, another great story. These guys, literally it was um, two people met each other on the beachfront, thought, I like swimming in the morning. The other one goes, I like swimming in the morning and I like drinking coffee. So they went, do you want to meet you here tomorrow? Do a bit of swimming together? They went, yeah, okay. So you met the next day, and then a couple of other people followed them in the water. And then more and more people. And now the other night, I think there are 280-something-odd people mm. turned up and got in the water. I mean, it's crazy. Um, oh, how were they doing? Just in there for half an hour swimming about? Yeah, I mean, most people we are in there. We could not get you out. <laughs> yeah. I like, I like the water. You know. I'm built for it. It's like ben, Ben, <laughs> come on, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, the water's warmer this time of year. I, I, someone's probably going to pick me up on this, but it's warmer this time of year because obviously all the currents and everything else that goes round. So towards the back end of the summer, the water's actually warmer than it is in the summer. Um, but actually, once you get in and then your blood sort of um, goes to your core, it's surprisingly warm. As long as you're moving around just a little bit, it's surprisingly warm. And I actually really enjoyed it. It was actually, it was all right. It was beautiful. It wasn't morning. until you got out, mm. then obviously the your blood then goes to your, your extremities, you know, and then, I mean, some of my extremities are quite big. So, you know, <laughs> like these arms. He's not, he's not on you. <laughs> is something about the cold water? Someone, I don't know what it is. That That's what I want to look at. I saw Hugh Fernie Witten still do it. My mate Jay Morton has been doing it. I want to know what the score was. I went and did it and it was br brilliant. I, I can't answer the question. It's just, I don't know why. It is just, you get in there, I feel good. There's other people in there and it just sets you up for the rest of the day. Well, I think the main one is that, it, cause I started, I was one of the, every time you heard someone say about cold water, anything, it just, it, at one point, everyone was talking about it. So. Didn't want to hear it again. And someone started saying to me, a guy who was struggling, was he struggling? A guy who was like anyone else, he was having hard, hard times or fight, struggling with stuff. Just nothing major, but he started, one of the things he started doing was cold, he started cold showering and then he was getting in the cold, in the bin outside, you know, with the cold mm. water, not with rubbish in there, like with, <laughs> with the cold water, you know, converted. I've it. done that. And he, <laughs> he mentioned it to me. And I was like, no way, this is not happening ever. What are you talking about? I, hot showers for me, no way. I'd been in a freeze, I'd been in a cold a plunge pool once. I got, a, well, once recently in the last few years. Got out of a sauna, got into a plunge pool in the gym. So I went from extreme hot to extreme cold. That was all right. It was in 30 seconds in there for not enjoying it at, at all. Got out and the pain, oh. I could hardly walk. The, the pain was extreme. Well, I wasn't used to that cold water, mm -hmm. but I'd gone from hot to cold. And when I, and the plunge pool was in the same r sort of part of the bill, uh, room as where the sauna is. So it's hot air as well. You know, you're going cold or hot. Anyway, long story short, I, I cold shower every morning now. Started doing it six weeks ago. Because um, I try and work it out. Like, what is it? Because they're not sure about the physical benefits of cold water. Therapy. They're not sure that it even anything, does anything. Mm -hmm. On the mental health aspect, for me, it's like I don't look forward to it in the morning. I don't. But you feel better after it because I've done it. Yeah. Because I've done it because it's it's discomfort and I get in there and it's fine when you get in, like you say. But that, I I look at the shower and go, Jesus Christ, God's sake! And then I get in there. The first time I did it, I was in. Uh, sorry, sorry. I'll, I'll land over in a minute. The first time I did it, I was. I must have been two minutes staring at the shower, trying to get myself psych going. Psych myself up. Uh -huh. I was doing breathing exercises and everything. Right? 
And then I got in there, and as soon as I stepped under, I, I burst out laughing. I was like hysterical laughing. L l laughing at me doing that beforehand. Laughing at the fact that I was cold showering after for a year going, no way, absolute rubbish. But I it's the decision you made for you. And I think that's the, the click, isn't it? Yeah. In, in the, okay, well, ah, it's taking control of something for yourself. Yeah. And, yeah. and it, it, in the it, hope of. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. Discomfort, which mm -hmm. doesn't, which, which isn't, doesn't harm you. But then also, it's that, that, sh that shock, there's a bit of shock to it. Yeah. Your body goes through a bit of shock to it. That, like you say, wakes you up. Does that stop You're reset like, you, man. do you think? Yeah. You know, that's that shock. You know, it's a stop, reset, and a, okay, let's go. Let's, let's attack the day. Mm. Yeah, I love it. It's called water. So I can see why people do the old open water swim. I went to go with Simon Harmer. He came, when he came to the yeah, he does it in the uh, local canal, doesn't he? Yeah, we went to go down. We went down towards Stratford after we'd done the podcast, because I hadn't done it before. We went to go down with him. We got it, it had been loads of rain the day before, and it was like it was the river was not. We didn't want to be getting in there, <laughs> so we didn't get in there in the end. But um, and I got a friend at home in Wales who who goes in every morning at six a.m. Mm -hmm. in near Swansea, gets into the river there, with which is a pair of boxer shorts on, and so, uh, wetsuit gloves, uh, w yeah, wetsuit gloves and wetsuit socks to protect the extremities. Mm -hmm. But apart from that, he's oh, and he's got a woolly hat on, and then he but he'll dunk his head under as well to get to the, to stimulate the. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's stimulating, but I don't know. I don't know, but um, I'd also, I think it's also just being up at that time in the morning. You well, know, the, the sun I, was amazing. Yeah, was. You know, the sunrise was. I mean, we couldn't have got a better day. Well, even the fact that I wasn't amazing. in there, you know, I didn't go into the water. But oh my gosh, I was buzzing from the from the community, the anticipation, yeah. the excitement. I know. I mean, we were up that early. We had the whole day ahead of us. Yeah. Does that make sense? I don't know, maybe that's the thing. Uh, I just uh, I almost ran out of things to do. Uh, that. That's another, that is a funny enough, funny you mentioned that. It's another like recent discovery of mine is um, a different friend. This is the thing with meeting these people, all these different people. Like you're saying, the tips and stuff to pass over. I've, there's so much stuff that I don't I don't put into play that other people do with the mindfulness. But there's ones that I've just chosen that work for me. Like that, I got a friend who gets up at five a.m. every might be 4.30, 4.30 or 5 a.m. he gets up every morning. This lad's 26, mate. He was in, he's in 216 SIGs, uh, you know, 216 SIGs, 16 uh, assault brigade for a few years. Got out. I mean, um, and just he's super, he, yeah, and had some struggles. And he's just now super disciplined and like uber productive, flipping awesome dude. He gets up in the morning at 4.30 or 5 and he has a, this routine step by step by step from from bit of yoga to a bit of reading to none of it involves phone <laughs> you know you know there's music on listen to some music you'll do some writing in the journal but he has that and, I, and again that was another one oh god getting up that time is mental i started doing it i thought my missus was like oh god alarm going off at five five thirty she doesn't not get up till six he said the impact of getting up that time in the morning isn't one bit the biggest one for me with it I was not in the, I was, it's not the habit of setting the alarm at the latest time you need to get up to achieve what you need no, to do. No, it's getting up beforehand. It's getting up and going, and oh, you've got plenty of time. Yeah. Plenty of time. There is no rush. Because mm -hmm. one of the things I struggle with is like, I always feel rushed, I always feel pressure I, uh, all the time. And that, that getting up at that time, I, it, it forces me to go, you ain't got to rush now. You can, this is your relaxed time. This is, you, you, you can relax. Amazing. It's incredible. It, yeah. It's, uh, it was a great morning, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was highly amazing. recommend it. I, I mean, it just, I just that then, no, it's cool. <laughs> I just think what they've created was was awesome, and and um, that's what I like about doing the show. Is just it's an opportunity to highlight good people doing good shit locally around them, you know. And and I think uh, people are doing something positive that's about others as opposed to themselves, which is which is what we like to highlight. So there's so yeah. much going on, and we've 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 got so many ideas for the. Uh, in the process yeah. of happening for the but next But I mean, all of this but... is like, um, you know, some of the ideas is, you know, what's wrong with going down the pub with your mate and have a bit, having a beer? You know, we, we talk about that when we went to uh, Beefy Boys and actually the importance of it's not, you know, we talk about nutrition and everything else, but we're also going to Beefy Boys and having a big, greasy, you know, fat boy, <laughs> dirty burger. But there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I... You know, uh, okay, I'm not shredded. I'm not going to be on the front cover of Men's Health magazine, but I'm healthy. You know, I'm healthy. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, 
uh, mobile. I can do stuff with my family, my kids. I choose a lifestyle that works for me. Yeah, okay, I'd like to have less of a gut. Yes, I'd ha like to have less back fat, everything else. But to be fair, am I doing anything about it? No, not really. I'm doing... Um, what I'm doing is I'm doing enough to make sure that I maintain my health and, and maintain that I'm, I'm, I'm going okay. I'm not ripping the ass out of it. And that's kind of what we want to do is we want to show that you don't have to make big drastic changes to your life. You just have to make a few, few little bits and pieces just to make sure that you're staying healthy and happier for you and your, and the people who depend on you. Absolutely. And I think, you know, we're both parents and, um, you know, kids at different ages, but we're just trying to lead by, lead by example, yeah. you know, for our, for our families really Absolutely. and keep up with them yeah well you uh, you know so some of that going back to some of the ideas for the stories is um you know one one thing that we f have failed at within the military mod and stuff like that is actually where we've closed down a lot of these unit bars okay these did turn into uh, people were, be, were drinking more often in some cases but actually we were probably dealing with a lot of our issues better because after work we were having a beer um, British culture, the way we've always been for hundreds of years, is after you finish work, you go and have a beer with your mates or you socialise. Women still do it a lot more than men as they go and meet each other. They have a drink, they have a coffee, and they're unloading and offloading. Men, we tend to need to be lubricated a little bit more before we start unloading. And I think it was the RAF. I did a flight safety officers course a while ago before I left. Um, and actually what I learned on there was... Um, that actually they'd seen um, less issues back when uh, the squadron bars were open and people would go in there and they kind of offload to their mates. So when they're having a shit one, they can just mm -hmm. say, you know, after a couple of beers, they're saying, yeah, you know, things aren't going that great at home or this. But now what we're seeing in the in the military is people having their own rooms and people being more isolated and people aren't offloading. So there is something to say. I'm not talking about a drinking culture as in a binge drinking culture, but I'm certainly saying more about a social culture. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that we kind of we're lacking now. So some of the things we want to highlight in the show is, um, you know, there's nothing wrong to going down the local pub and enjoying a, you know, enjoying that time and you know bringing maybe people together, bringing people it? together and mm. socialising and, and, and interacting, being human essentially, you know, sharing and and just looking out for each other really and checking in, especially you know what we've all gone through the last couple of, couple of years almost mm. really now, isn't it? And it's yep. just like, look, are you all right? You know, and the moment that we were able to get outside and, and meet just one person, you know, albeit with a flask of coffee, you know, walking the dogs, just yeah. whatever it takes. Or confined into a really small room like this. <laughs> <laughs> Talking to you, mate. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's it, man. Um, I, let's have a bit of fun with it. That's the main thing. Absolutely. And, and going back to what, what we talked about at the start is our... Uh, from our artistic side is what we want to do here is we want to create something we want to create a platform of sorts and hopefully at the same time we're able to give back and maybe do a bit of good at the same time so that's it own it own it own it i like the name i like the name um are you going to do it in a series format or is it going to be a rolling a rolling so it'll be like 10 10 you could do 10 episodes and have a break, or are you just going to keep rolling through? Uh, I don't know, is the honest answer. We, at the moment, um, we're kind of pushing it to an extent where we can only really fund it ourselves before it starts becoming a little bit too taxing. Um, can't say too much at the moment, but um, we've got um, some people who are, who are doing very well for themselves who are looking to pick it up. Well, at least look at picking up. So what we've done is the first two episodes are really more of a pilot, um, a pitch deck, if you like, into what we what we want to create. Um, what we do need now is probably a, a, a more comprehensive production company to come in and start looking at it from everything from scripts to um, to the production, and then obviously then access to networks, etc. But as a concept, it's original. As a concept, no one else has done it. Um, yeah, and I think it's very topical and, and mega on point at the moment. How long is each episode? Uh, it's difficult because we've 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 put it to forty minutes, and to get the content in, it's like when you do a podcast. Because we're actually listening to real people's stories, it's how you condense that chat 
into making sure you get the real points out of there and actually convey the message we want to do as well as obviously making sure it's interesting so you've got lots of uh, sort of b-roll stuff so a lot of cinematic side to it and everything else so it, it's quite difficult but at the moment it's 40 minutes uh each episode um could we go shorter yeah maybe maybe we could put them in more bite-sized chunks let's see see what a more professional production company suggests really mm. It's interesting. Isn't it? I think a lot about at the moment about the the, the sort of the, the the length, the duration of any production, really, from mm -hmm. podcasting to you know creating a, 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 a TV episode. Essentially, what we're doing, right? Mm. Because um, well, as you know, the, you know, the attention spans come right down. The attention span of people's come right. I mean, seconds, mm -hmm. seconds is yep. you know. Uh, and if you don't capture people's attention in those f in those first few seconds, then you kind of haven't got it. But then at the same time. I think there's a there is a, there is a there is a growing demand out there for people listening to people talk honestly, unscripted, almost you know, um, which is kind of for a, a bunch of reasons. But it just you know, I think about the podcast like hmm, where where do you see it? Where is it going? Where is it all going? Because I mean, what's interesting is uh, is the length of productions on like big proper productions like on uh, Amazon, on Netflix, on on, t on terrestrial television. The, the duration of those kind of, you know, a series, uh, an episode, they are not coming down. They haven't come down over the last yeah. five, no, ten no, years. Really. They sort of stayed the same, haven't they? Yep. Same with the films. So you'd think that, if, okay, if they're not feeling the need, or if they're still maintaining the attention span of people, then maybe... It depends on how you're viewing and watching it, isn't it? So mm. podcasts, you can do that in a car. Uh, it's the advantage of a podcast, and obviously a video podcast is you can do it in a car. Or someone can sit there on a train and watch it. Um, and obviously the availability and how easy it is to find that. Um, obviously with a TV show, it's sort of thing you want to kick back, sit back, you know, spend a bit of time when you know you've got a dedicated period of time to do that. Um, so I suppose it's horses for courses, really, isn't it? It's, it's kind of um, depending on... I mean, what's that one I watched the other day? I watched I watched a show the other day about um, uh, smoke barbecue smoking. I mean, I wouldn't be doing that in the car, but I wouldn't really be doing it when the kids are running around. But when I'm just decompressing at night and just vegging on the couch, then I'll watch all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. You know, so also it's going to come down to when's the best day to pitch this show. Personally, I'd like to see it pitched out on a Sunday if we do take it to network because on a Sunday means that actually it gives the rest of the week for people to try the top tips and gives almost a start point. Yeah, it's a good start to the week, isn't it? And yeah. um, moving forward. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's a difficult one, but you know, I'll, I'll look to, I'm a ex door kicker, mate. I'll, I'll get someone who knows what they're doing and what they're talking about to probably look into that. Are you going to, you talk about getting SMEs on, on each one. I think you mentioned psychologist, nutritionist, psychologist, nutritionist, Physio physiotherapist. Or a, uh, yeah. And uh, That's are it, you going to stick to those yeah, areas so. permanently? Well, not permanently, but. For, no, know, I think for the, near, for the near future, yeah, stick to those three main topics. I think we need to, HR4K as we've grown, we've been all over the place from procurement, defense procurement uh, to, I don't know, selling coffee and then coffee shops and everything else like that. And I think we're slowly finding our feet now, HR4K as a business, and we're going to start looking at more sort of coffee shop, community hubs with a health and fitness spin on it. And I think we also need to probably define ourselves with this show and sort of stick to a, uh, almost not say a genre, but certainly a, um, a channel, uh, a lane, if you like. And that lane is probably going to stick within the sort of the physical and mental well-being areas. So by doing that, then obviously that covers... Uh, nutrition, physiotherapy, uh, you know, um, uh, physiology, uh, psychology, and obviously nutrition. But again, keeping those topics fairly light, keeping the, the subject matter experts topical, and uh, obviously ensuring that we're not being preachy. So, yeah, I think we probably stick to those three. How are you getting hold of the SMEs? Like where are they, are they just people you already know? Yeah, are they going to vary? They're, gonna yeah, they're friends. friends. Every, everyone on the Genuinely. show. Genuinely. Yeah. Genuinely, we haven't even kind of gone, ooh, at any point yet. And we've kind of got, yeah, genuinely people through the friends friends that we've, and through your career, 
obviously Richie's career as well and um, ideas that we've had between us all. Um, we've genuinely just gone. I think if you can, most just of us, pick the phone up. We can go in. We can, you can literally go on your Facebook, can't you, or your Instagram page and look at people who you know, and just you could literally make a show out of your own <laughs> contacts. Can you? I mean, how many contacts you've got on there that you haven't already found on Instagram or found them through through your own people or your own friends that you you, you have? Um, so these topics are all around us. That, that was the beauty. Going back to that piece about being at the top of the penny fan. I didn't have to look for it. Mm -hmm. It was there. It's all around us. It's mm -hmm. just bringing those things out. And then what we want, as I said, is to go, actually, I relate to that. I relate to that. I re Actually, I could do with that. You know, how old are you, Hugh? 39. I'll be 40 in a few weeks. Okay, so I I'm 44, right? There's only so much knowledge and there's only so many contacts that I can have in my 44 years. And there's only so many people that I'm going to cross paths with in those 44 years. So you go back to your point there about I never knew about um, that cold water therapy. Well, why should you? If that's not something that's in your lane, then mm -hmm. you wouldn't. So obviously, unless you're actively going out and researching new types and new things, really you kind of stay in your own lane. You've got your own shit to deal with. You've got your own family to be looking after. You've got your own business or your own work lines that you've got to do. So all we want to do is tap into all these networks and bring that information back in and say, actually, the people around you, are well, once we're connected, we can learn so much more and we can work out what works for you, what works for him, what works for her. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. But, I mean, granted, I'm very lucky. <laughs> as, as I've said earlier, I've been to lots of different units. Uh, I've had a pretty random life and obviously got a business where I open up. I've got the opportunity to open up my networks. So I'm very, very fortunate that I get to meet lots and lots and lots of people. But the key is to obviously see how we can work with all these people we meet and how we can hook them up and how we can remember who they are and what they've done and everything else like that. So, yes, okay, I have an advantage of that. But generally, all our guests are people we know. Mm -hmm. oh, that's cool. I like the sound of it. It's really interesting. Um, uh, and those, you know, those three, the three sort of knowledge streams you're looking at, those SMEs, you probably over time find that you can there'll be opportunity to drill down a little bit further because your your audience will become more learned in those areas as, as 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 it grows won't they i suppose they'll be becoming more knowledgeable in physiotherapy nutrition yeah. yeah and also so will the subject matter experts the more the subject matter experts learn their craft and create and the more trends change and the more um research is done within those fields they're going to learn more and everything else so everyone everyone who's listening will only be catching up with the subject matter experts who are learning it in the fields so but also yeah. we've thrown things open so that you know to, to to listen to what people would like you know to, to to be able to open up these platforms and actually if they want to see more of something or what about this you know get in touch get yeah. in touch yeah same as what you do so what like you when we first did that the those questions you know we want to get that feedback mm. and i think the great thing about the platform and what we've done is it does open up for viewer participation it does open up to get things like blogs um you know pages uh forums etc it does open that up because actually when we highlight uh for example dale walker the who does uh, bulletproof bodies what we do is we also highlight his own company. So now we're now signposting people to his company so they can learn more directly from him. They're not going to learn it from me. They're going to learn it from the actual subject matter expert themselves. So what we hope to do here is not only give people top tips, we also want to promote people's businesses. We want to promote good causes. We want to promote events. We want to promote charities. We want to promote all these good things that are going on in the community and just creating a platform where people can come and share that does that make sense what's what's bulletproof bodies what's that uh so uh dale walker who's one of our first guests he was my physio um and that's why i brought him on and he um he has now left the military and he runs a company called bulletproof bodies which is essentially a um, a physio uh workshop um where obviously he goes and does things like um crossfit events and other bits and pieces and um he just helps people out through sort of what his knowledge of physiotherapy etc so that's his own business where we brought him on as a subject matter expert we can then link 
that mm. where we've got new musicians come on we can then link their bands their their new albums and everything else so it's a great platform to actually highlight lots of other people so it's not about us in fact it's very little about us really isn't it we don't actually do a lot of talking on there which is surprising because i've done a lot of talking on here <laughs> <laughs> you, you do a lot of talking in general <laughs> <laughs> no it sounds mega it sounds mega you know i've obviously seen um i have watched all of the first one i've, I've i was um uh, uh, doing something more interesting? No, no, no. I don't. Well, I, I. You know what? It's it's time and time and attention span. Hundred percent. You know. Uh, I. Yeah. I. It's something I have to manage closely. Well, the first one. To be fair, we didn't even have mics on the first first no, first gosh. one. So we literally like he had the mic at the end of we his learnt, camera. Learned very quickly. Hopefully pointing it, and then in the background we had like the fan going, the kids playing in the background, <laughs> and it was just a clusterfuck. Now we've actually got like these little. Well, lapel, like, mics. Yes. lapel mics yeah. you know it, it's it's have to remember to whatever. turn them off when we're building it in. up you know what i mean it's <laughs> grassroots it's good fun yeah i haven't not watched the first one by the way i haven't watched <laughs> it in full like uh, the, the when you were at the penavan and you met those the the, the i remember the, the guy and the, the two girls and that's why i thought i was surprised when you said it was you bumped into them i thought they were i, I thought Genuine it was absolutely people. orchestrated they were there thought, in their own right brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. Brilliant. yeah all of those people makes it all the more authentic right mm. 100%. I think, uh, I don't know when it's going to be on, but we went to a bike meet. Oh, that was cool. Um, up at Crazy Horse in Bury St. Edmunds, and um, we oh, just you bumped go, into... Go and have a look at that place, yeah. It's mega. And we've linked in with them at the, our HR4K uh, Colchester shop as well. So we've got um, Guy Martin's bike in there and a few bikes from Crazy Horse. And um, when we went up there, we just met people there, and we are like, why are you here? You know, why, why are these events important to you? You know, why? You know, tell us... Tell us what draws you to these events, and events like that. You know, we all, you and I've talked about when we get on our motorbikes. It's about escapism, isn't it? You know, um, I get on a bike, I feel like a rock star. Same as why you go to these events. You go to these events, you dress up in your alliest, your coolest gear, and you feel like an absolute rock star for that period of time you're there. You know, it's the same as same as why airsofters dress up on the on the on those weekends and everything else. Why do they dress up? Because they it's escapism. Mm. It's taking them out of what's normal. You know, um, we see it we see it in all walks of life. Um, whether it's your hobby or whether it's um, whatever, but you, I think it's important to create those those events and have those events uh, uh, and a chance to express yourself. So again, that brings you back to the communities you involve yourselves in. So bikes is a, is a massive part of, of what we're about anyway. But what's interesting about bikes or cars or anything else that's, that's a physical object is that actually it's not necessarily the physical object that's of interest. It's why it brings people together mm -hmm. to talk about that physical object. And you find you have bike meets and people turn up these bike meets and they're showing off their new bikes. But before they know it, they're now interacting they're talking communicating and they're probably not talking about bikes anymore but they don't know each other even exactly. you know they don't know their names but that that common ground I'm, i've grown up um, going to classic car shows and my, with my as a family you know take a picnic take a dog you know and go you know my dad's always had classic cars and and even now we've got an old old toyota pickup truck and it's the it's the car of choice on the school run uh, for so many reasons but uh, but it's it's over 20 years old and and it's got windy windows and the girls absolutely love it but it makes me smile and we we went up to well we went to do some filming the other day and we, and it was it's like, like being in mad max <laughs> is it a hilux yeah, yeah. Oh, brilliant. but it's all done up green it's you know, trucky raised wheel you, trucky. you name it but again you know you get in there why would you buy a cool car like that or have a car because it's escape it's about yeah. doing something that's creative it's about escapism it's about showing off your own personalities and it everything else and then right. obviously when you go to these meets you're now showing off an extension of your personality to someone else so it's a massive part of us as humans and it makes others smile as well and it that in turn brings people together you might yeah. not know their na first name. It doesn't matter. Yeah, and it, I mean it can augment the personality as well, as, isn't it? Where people aren't, where people need, where people need the the trigger of a talking point that yes. isn't that they can't generate themselves because lack of confidence, lack yeah. of self esteem, and it you just need that little. Yeah, I've got a tow at Hilux, and it's twenty years old, and like yeah, I do use, use it for school. I've got a, like I drive an, Al an Almira, and it's an Almira, and it's just become you know I got given it by chat. I, I given it a chat, chatable donation. And, and 
at a time I really needed a fucking car. I couldn't. Long. That's a different story, right? But now, it's it's kind of a that talking point. It's funny. It's gone from, you know, I'm I'm dad with the granny car, you know, and I go past the Thrall mirrors with people with, you know, old people <laughs> drive on mirrors, right? Well, Stay with the mask on. I'll mirror squad. I'll mirror squad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, but it's, it, in, you know, it's that, it's that kind of little... That's brings you it, together. But, yeah. It's no Hilux, right? But it's, it, it's yeah. It's, and some people do need that. Some people can't. They can't. They want to interact. They can't, but they can't. They don't know how yeah. to stimulate it, to kick it off, you know? So, I yeah. think I think that's what we've tried to do, actually, is create a platform... That with people that we genuinely, you know, we genuinely are friends with and want and are kicking about with, and we're just sharing mm. that platform and hope that it engages and hits hits yeah. a hits something registers with someone in some small way in order in a positive way to move forward and look to keep rolling. Sally, yeah, great. It's exciting. It's, it's exciting. So people can watch it on. HR4K TV, which on, on YouTube. Yep. Uh, Instagram, HR4K Instagram, uh, HR4K YouTube. You can see it on our LinkedIn page as well. Um, and then hopefully... Audio version? Uh, no, not really, because it's quite a visual quite visual. A visual thing. Um, I think there's definitely scope to do an audio, vis- uh, an audio version one day. But again... I think we're trying. That there's so many good podcasts out there doing good bits and pieces. Um, hopefully, I might go on one once. Um, there are so <laughs> many good podcasts out That's there. Right, I know, yeah. Um, <laughs> but they're doing so so much. We just want to do something that's a little bit different, and we want to. This is our craft, you know. We want to do something a bit different, and so that's why it's very much a visual thing for this. Cool. However, it will probably have blogs and everything else mm. once we get going. Cool. Like it, loads of scope, loads of scope. Yeah, loads. It's and, uh, and and you know what the main thing is, like you're saying, if you guys are enjoying it, then fuck it. Well, just see yeah. what happens. That's what I said to Ben, happens. it was like, come on, <laughs> let's do it anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it's a hundred percent. If you don't do it, who else is going to do it? And actually, I'm just going to enjoy doing it. it. This is an extension of me wanting to create. So why the fuck? Why the fuck not? Someone watches it, like you said, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of pay me better. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is a good part of the show. So hopefully, we can also not only can we do that, we can also look to do advertising off the back of it. We can do product placement. So where people want to support the show, uh, potentially they could actually get their products in the show. Are there sponsorship opportunities now? Uh, not right at the moment, um, just because we're not set up. But if people are interested, then get in comms via HR4K. And then we can look at how we can do things like product placement, advertising, or even pushing some of the good causes that they're doing. Um, so as we know, a lot of good companies have uh, a certain messages and other things that they want to push and promote. And obviously, if it fits in line, as long as we're not looking like we're selling out, then we'd be keen to push uh, some great causes and some great things. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Anything else you want to cover? What, have, we, have we missed anything? Mm, no. I think we've nailed it, haven't we? Yeah, I think so. Mega. Been a pleasure. No, I'm excited to see the next episode. Thank I'm excited you. to watch oh, all wait, of the first yeah, episodes. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Rumbled. Um, no, 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 in all seriousness, good luck with it. And, Thank you, bro. Um, if you're doing anything at the uh, HR4K and the live stuff, yeah. let me get me down so I can be an audience member and have a look. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not... None of that physical exercise stuff, though. No. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, November. Come down for November. Uh, I'll work something out. I think we're going to probably, next time we get the band in, we're probably mm. going to put tickets out for that yeah. so we can oh. get a load of people to actually be there and watch the band uh, play. And so come down for that or then come down and just just fuck about with us. Sweet. Good pleasure. Good luck. Wicked. Thank you, Thank brother. You. No worries. That's it. Thank you for watching the H Hour podcast. If you're enjoying the podcast and you haven't already done so, please subscribe here, around about there. I'm hoping it's around about there where the button's going to appear, if not, if it's not already appeared. Uh, you can also, um, if you want to listen to the podcast, on your commute, for example, when you're driving, when it's not practical to watch the podcast, you can listen to it. It's on Spotify. It's on Apple Podcasts. It's on Google Podcasts. It's everywhere. It's on all of the, uh, all of the common and not-so-common podcast apps. 
You can also, if you wish to do it, become a patron of Hey Hour. Becoming a patron of Hey Hour, you get access to all of the interviews before anyone else. So this interview with this guest was released days, if not weeks, before it was on release to the general public. And you also get access to uh, exclusive interviews, which I do with each guest, that last about five, ten minutes, that are based on questions that the patrons themselves of Hey Hour have chosen. And each guest, this one included, gets asked those questions before the main podcast starts getting recorded. It's like a pre-podcast interview, lasts about ten minutes. And those interviews are really insightful, really enjoyable, nice and short, and they only release to patrons. They never, they never get released to the public. I don't know why I had a little stutter there. Um, you also get access to... A Discord community, exclusive Discord community only for patrons. You also get invited to a monthly Zoom call with myself and all the other patrons. And very often, most months, we have a previous podcast guest comes onto that Zoom call and has an exclusive Q&A with the patrons. In addition to this, there's monthly giveaways. We give away, give away gifts to my patron supporters. And it's all like, well, predominantly veteran-owned stuff. I'll go and buy veteran-owned apparel, veteran-owned product services, and I'll give them away to my patron supporters. And I'll also uh, do exclusive invites for events. So you'll get freebie tickets to events. To become a patron of Hey Hour, go to patreon.com forward slash HK podcast. I'm spelling Patreon, P A T R E O N, patreon.com forward slash HK podcasts. Hit become a patron. And uh, I'll see you on the next Zoom, Q- Zoom QA if you do. Oh, you also get your name in the credits. Thanks for watching. I will catch you next time.